Hi, this is Jeff, N6QPF, from Lincoln, California. And this is a production of the Western Placer Amateur Radio Club. You can find us on the net at www.parknet.org. And on Wednesdays, if you're in the Sacramento area, come on by and join us at 145.25 minus offset 162.25. 2PL. That's the N6NA repeater. We also hang around the Yuba City repeater, which is WD6AXM 146.085, and you can look up the details in your repeater handbook. Today's topic is the remote control of a PSK31 station. And we're going to talk about two different aspects of control. Uh, one is controlling it through the internet, where you can control it any place that you want. And the second is controlling it on your own local area network. Let's say you don't want to go across the uh, cross country. You just want to control it from your back patio. Two different ways to control your amateur radio station. And again, I'm focusing on PSK31 uh, because I didn't want to get involved with the um, single side, pan, side band and, and voice. However, that's not too difficult to do. And I'll point you some directions if you want to do, it, do that as well. Now, there's three prerequisites to having a remote control radio station. First of all, your radio must be able to be controlled by a computer. Now, this varies depending on what kind of radio that you've got. My old Yesu FT767GX, for example, you could control it through the, an interface uh, cable. But you can only control the frequency and a few things like that. You couldn't control the volume, the squelch, couldn't turn it on or off. Modern radios, like the Kenwood TS480, for, uh, for example, you can do everything via software on the computer. You can turn it on and off, you can adjust the filters, you can adjust the frequency, you can adjust the volume, the squelch, you name it. If you can do it from the front panel, as a matter of fact, you can probably do more stuff from the computer than you can do from the front panel. The second thing you do, need to do is connect that radio up to your computer. Now, usually this is done using a serial cable. Now, for the Yesu FT767, you not only had to have a serial cable, but it needed a special interface along with that cable. The Kenwood uh, TS480, on the other hand, has all the smarts built into the radio, and all you need is a straight-through serial cable to connect it to your, to your uh, computer. The third thing you need is software to control the radio. Now, this can vary. You can uh, download Ham Radio Deluxe, for example, which is a free program. They just ask for a donation if you like it. You can use TRX Manager, which is what I use. And or in some cases, the manufacturer will provide the software. Now, in the case of my FT767 that I had, the only thing that would work with it is the TRX Manager software. None of the free download software would work with the the, uh, 767, and uh, Yesu didn't make any software for it. Modern radios, like the Kenwood TS480, work with just about everything. You can use Ham Radio Deluxe. You can use TRS uh, Manager if you're used to that, if you like it. It even comes with its own software, which is pretty darn good, that you can use. ICOM and Yesu also have software for their, for their radios, and in some cases, they may charge for it. So let's go ahead and talk about interfacing our radio over the Internet and using uh, PSK31 uh, from a remote location. Come on and join me. Thank you. All right, let's go to the shack and see how well we have met the, re- the prerequisites. First, we have a computer controllable radio. Here's a Kenwood TS480. And it's hooked up via serial cable to an EasySync 4 port serial to USB interface. Now, this one here for Windows Vista required some down, uh, drivers to be downloaded from the website. However, if you're running XP, it's all plug and play. Next, let's take a look at what software we have. Let's get a look, take a look at the computer. All right, here we've got uh, the Windows Vista system, and I'm selecting uh, the TRS, TRX manager. And by default, as soon as it runs, it turns the radio on, or at least it's supposed to. Let's bring up the control panel. 
All right, there's the control panel, and it's reading the radio. Oh, there we go. There's the frequency that it's on. We have all the prerequisites met now for being able to control our radio using the computer. Next, let's take a look at the remote control portion. I'm going to give you an assignment. You need to go to YouTube and do a search on YouTube for K7 AGE and remote control. There, Randy's got a 12-minute video that covers the basics about the software that's needed for both controlling the radio and providing the audio interface so that you can hear what's going on on the radio as well as being able to transmit your voice. I don't go into the voice section because it's really not needed for PSK31. You can tell from the radio remote control software and the PSK software what your audio levels are pretty darn good so you don't need it in the basic installation that we're covering here but if you want uh, to have the audio and as just a general tutorial go to uh, YouTube and take a look at Randy's uh, video all right now we're ready to install some software on our home PC that will allow us to remotely log in I chose logmein.com based on Randy's recommendation in the upper right hand corner there's a place where you can either log in after you signed up or you can create an account so the first time around you hit create an account and you go through and you select log me in free or log me in pro pro has additional uh, features and such as being able to copy files and some sound management enter in your email address and a password and you're set to download the program you select add a computer once the that is all done and that asks you uh, goes through and prompts you to whether to install log me in free on that on this computer so you select install log me in free and download that software on the program get some informational messages that come up and pretty much it's a go through and click next on Windows Vista on my system I had a blocker and so it came up with another screen it sends that blocker it came up with a really nice screen that showed the three steps that it goes through to install the software and it was all uh, select run or next and stepped right through the process downloaded the software I didn't have to reboot or anything gave me good informational messages and then it was all finished and ready to run it was running on my computer if you check on the toolbar on the lower right hand side or the left side of the the toolbar on the bottom of the screen there's the little dots there and that shows that it's running in the background on my PC so we are all set to test out our PC and see if it's ready for remote control